We need to have a serious talk about Donald Trump and the future of MAGA in America. My goal is to do exactly that in this video. Let's get started. First, one of the cool things about Donald Trump is that you can actually track people's sentiment of Donald Trump using the stock market. That's because there is a stock, ticker symbol DWAC, which technically represents some ownership in the social media platform Truth Social, which of course people believe would be very popular under a potential Trump campaign or Trump presidency. Now, while we haven't actually seen proof of uh, revenues and profits at Truth Social yet, it is actually a functioning platform, which a year ago and about 13 months ago, it wasn't. So it is actually a functioning platform and pretty much the reason to use it is to see what the heck Donald Trump is up to, since at least at the moment, he's banned from Twitter. And even though Elon Musk suggests he'll get unbanned from Twitter, it's unclear clear whether or not Donald Trump will actually make it back to Twitter. But if you look at the sentiment, so to speak, of Donald Trump on or via this stock, uh, you could see it's certainly been in decline and seen better days. Certainly when we had the first euphoria of the stock, which ended up exceeding at one point $170 up to $175 per share, you could see this stock has behaved very much like a typical meme stock. As volume declined, which are these bars at the bottom, as volume declined, price declined, and the stock went all the way from $175 all the way down to where it sits now at about $22, and you see its recent weakness following the election because we didn't end up getting that Donald Trump announcement. Now we'll talk about Donald Trump's announcement, but it's worth noting that 13 months ago, I went on Newsmax and I was asked, hey, uh, so what do you think about DWAC? What am I buying when I get DWAC? And here's what I had to say, plus here's what I thought the valuation might end up going down to while it was trading for nearly $100 a share at the time. So what is DWAC? I mean, can I touch it? Can I go into it? What am I buying into with this SPAC DWAC? What am I getting for my money? You're getting hope. Uh, that's what you're getting right now is, is hope. Uh, you're getting hope. So it's that trading at 100 Trump bucks ish you're telling me that I, I, so it started in like the single dollars. It closed yesterday in the forties. Today went as high as like 147 and people are buying hope. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Is this the type of stock you hold on to as an investment? Yeah, that's, that's what I think I want to know. <laughs> I, I would say maybe in three months when it comes back and rubber bands back down closer to $10. It's not something I would hold on to right now. So obviously I've been tracking DWAC for a while, but I also track the Donald Trump campaigns because well, A, they're very entertaining and B, I think they're very indicative of the mood of America. Not necessarily Trump's mood, <laughs> but uh, what is America thinking when we vote at polls? And so what's fascinating is Donald Trump had first planned to announce his plans to run for president. So announce his campaign for president in 2024, Monday, the evening before the election. Now, wisely so, he was encouraged not to run for election or announce his campaign for election before the 2022 election on Tuesday. This ended up being in many regards quite smart because the performance on Tuesday by most uh, accounts was not exactly the red wave that individuals were expecting. Certainly we do believe that Republicans will take control of the House and there's still a chance that Republicans will actually take control of the Senate. So the achievement of a divided government has been checked off and that's great for the stock market. But the fear for Donald Trump has always been uh-oh, what if people are losing interest in the Trump campaign, brand, or movement? That would be bad. And this last election sent at least some red flags up that maybe the MAGA movement is losing some momentum. Now, it's possible that much like when Donald Trump became president in 2016, individuals so dearly expected a red wave that they didn't bother to go vote because their vote wouldn't matter. And then very much like those who thought, oh, Hillary's definitely going to become president. And then Donald Trump became president. This time we saw or thought we were going to have a red wave and didn't get a red wave. So really interesting. So what's Donald Trump up to now? Well, here's the first thing that you need to know about campaigns. Remember, I 
Even though I lost, I did run for governor in California, so I know a little bit about campaigns. I'm not going to profess to know everything about campaigns, certainly. But, hey, we got uh, almost a million votes in California and uh, gave uh, Gavin Newsom some uh, challenges to think about. <laughs> so it certainly made him campaign a little harder. That guy's got to go. We'll talk about him in a moment, though. So you need momentum when you announce your campaign. And so you don't want to announce on the back of weakness. And so now there's talk that Donald Trump, who is supposed to have his victory announcement and announcement that he's running for 2024, that is a red wave victory, and a 2024 announcement at Mar-a-Lago uh, today, actually, Thursday, the 10th of November, that has been delayed Possibly A, because Hurricane Nicole is making a landfall, a category one, but also number two, because of the divided election in Georgia. Now the Trump campaign is suggesting that they want Herschel Walker to focus heavily on the December 6th runoff, and maybe we actually won't hear about a Trump announcement until maybe next week, or maybe not until we see what the performance is for Herschel Walker. After all, some say there really is no big rush for Donald Trump right now, although Donald Trump really wants to be early in his announcement in 2024 so he can front run and start doing more events. For Donald Trump, getting out in front of the people rather than as much in the media is a big part of his campaigning strategy. Getting in front of people, meeting people, and rallying together crowds as part of his uh, not only impression of success, but sort of his way to brand his campaign and entrench people into his potential successes. Now, people on the inside are suggesting that Donald Trump is potentially fuming over the loss of Dr. Oz's loss in Pennsylvania. However, Donald Trump is publicly distancing himself, calling this fake news and saying that I am, after all, a stable genius, and therefore he's not lashing out. In fact, Donald Trump endorsed Dr. Oz long after Dr. Oz got into the race. So again, publicly distancing himself from the loss that Dr. Oz faced, which was about a 4% margin loss. It actually ended up being pretty decent against uh, Dr. or not Dr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Fetterman. Fetterman, of course, had already been part of the government. He was the existing Democratic lieutenant governor. And Dr. Oz losing by 4% is not exactly uh, the most ideal for Donald Trump, who's obviously endorsed Dr. Oz, but again is distancing himself from that loss. Trump did it, and just to fact check this, uh, Dr. Oz announced his campaign on November 30th, 2021, and Trump endorsed him on April 10th, 2022. So some validity here. But of course, Donald Trump isn't just getting flack from Pennsylvania. He's also getting flack from the DeSantis group. The DeSantis group is privately suggesting that this is a complete disaster for Donald Trump. Now, Trump responds to this and says, what are you talking about? I got 1.1 more 1.1 million more votes than Ron DeSantis just got in this election when I ran for president. Now, of course, uh, you know, you could say there's a difference between a presidential campaign and a governor campaign. Oftentimes you just have less turnout in midterm elections, especially when they're not as dramatic as the elections that we see with Donald Trump running in them. Uh, but yeah, look, this is certainly disappointing for Donald Trump because uh, Ron DeSantis' performance was great. And even just before the election, Donald Trump was going out of his way to bag on DeSantis, suggesting that if DeSantis tries to run, Donald Trump might threaten to release or expose not so flattering information because Donald Trump says nobody knows DeSantis like Donald Trump, except maybe DeSantis' wife. So DeSantis' group, on the other hand, is suggesting this is a landslide victory for moderate Republicans. A landslide in Florida, a flipping of three House seats, the victory of Miami-Dade, a historically liberal voting county, all pointing to potentially DeSantis running for president in 2024. DeSantis' victory speech was also very, very focused uh, in a very presidential tone and in a tone that would suggest uh, national unity and a way uh, forward for the nation. And that message was very simple. Ron DeSantis, as I tweeted, uh, Ron DeSantis had the following to say, that Florida is where woke goes to die, 
that Florida is a state that focuses on facts over fear, though of course people will debate that, especially since Ron DeSantis had the nickname Ron Death Santis with COVID. Although when we actually look at statistics for COVID deaths, by some account, elderly individuals who were most at risk of death in Florida actually had lower death rates than states like California, which had much more stringent lockdowns or lockdowns at all and masking requirements, leading to the suggestion that maybe there is some truth to Ron DeSantis's handling of COVID, though of course then there are counter arguments to everything like people saying, oh well, the people who are older and moved to Florida are more active and wealthy and therefore more capable of seeking better care or surviving an illness. Anyway, Ron DeSantis's speech also focused on law and order versus riots and crime and freedom above all. Note also that DeSantis signed a bill to require high schools to teach personal finance and that was signed this March in 2022. And when I ran for governor in 2021, I made financial education in schools in California a, a core premise of my campaign, that this would become something mandatory and something that we would strive to implement in every single school within the next 12 months. Now, of course, I didn't get elected, but that's okay. What we want to pay attention to, though, is these are very moderate claims, and you're actually seeing even Democrats come towards these sorts of centers. You're seeing a massive movement by Democrats away from this defund the police argument and the BLM movement towards a more centrist view of, okay, wait a minute, we probably need better training and more police and not less. This is something that Mayor Suarez, who follows me on Twitter, by the way, uh, also suggests in Miami that imagine this, they hired more police officers and provided more training and crime went down. Of course, people will always dispute that and things will always be up for debate. But you're seeing a lot of moderates suggest runs for president. You've got Tim Scott suggesting that he wishes his father had been alive to see another black man become a president. Then you have Mike Pence, also deemed by many to be a moderate. Of course, MAGA, uh, generally the, the, the more right side, uh, does not uh, really appreciate Mike Pence. But Mike Pence is deemed by many to be a moderate. And Mike Pence, who's uh, going on a book tour starting, I believe, next week, is somebody who's also considering announcing a run in 2024. Really a push towards the moderates. DeSantis, Tim Scott, Mike Pence, and of course, there are different levels of moderate. Then you've got somebody like Lauren Bobart. Now, this is a very interesting one because Lauren in 2020 won a campaign by a landslide on the belief that we must focus on constitutional freedoms and gun rights further down the right wing spectrum and she won her campaign by a landslide. She beat the existing Republican by a margin of 63.9 to 36.1, a massive landslide on a percentage basis, though on a vote basis it was only about a 23,000 vote difference. Smaller district. But What's remarkable is that right now she's fighting for her seat with a difference of only a few hundred votes against a moderate Democrat. And so what we're seeing is this election is not just about, uh, about inflation, but it's about a move to the middle. The more we see people on the right and people on the left move to the middle, the more well they seem to actually be performing in polls. And so even though eight out of 10 of the Republicans who voted to impeach Donald Trump are gone, they've either not announced a rerun or they've already been knocked out in primaries or in their campaigns, there are actually two left who are widely expected to substantially lose in this election as Republicans and lose their House of Representative seats. Well, so far, these remaining two are actually performing better than expected. You've got David Vallejo of California with an 8% lead over, an, uh, over a Democratic contender. And you've got Dan Newhouse of Washington with a 36.8% lead over a competitor. Also, you've got Pennsylvania being a pretty decent-sized problem for Donald Trump. 
Not only did Dr. Oz lose by 4% to the existing lieutenant governor, but the governor, a Democrat, won by a 14% margin, and the 8th dis district, which was a district that Donald Trump carried by 2.9%, just had a Democrat win. In other competitive elections like the 17th and the 12th, Democrats won as well. In at least one case, flipping the seat to a Democratic seat. And so this is where things are really interesting for Donald Trump looking forward. See, I always thought it would be really ironic that Donald Trump loses his second term, then we get really high inflation under Joe Biden, and then the 24 election happens and inflation plummets, and Donald Trump comes back, and now you have the situation where all the inflation that was created during COVID, much of which was under the Trump administration, though the latter which under the Biden administration didn't help, that created a lot of the inflation, which then Biden inherited a lot of. And don't get me wrong, Biden made mistakes, especially the canceling of the Keystone Pipeline. I believe he's made lots of mistakes regarding Afghanistan and Ukraine, foreign policy and oil, or things and energy independence are, are, are big failures. I'm not here to shill Joe Biden, but I always thought it would be kind of ironic that if Donald Trump was able to escape all of the inflation and then got back in because the other president had high inflation, it'd be quite comedic almost, because we know that the inflation we're facing isn't solely driven by the president. It was driven heavily by bipartisan money printing of Congress and the Federal Reserve through very loose monetary policy and uh, zero interest rates. So that irony though might be turning around it is possible that we could see peak inflation under Biden's second half of his first term. If inflation actually plummets by the time of the 2024 election, which is two years away, it's entirely possible that Joe Biden or a moderate Democrat who runs, potentially if decided, somebody like Gavin Newsom, then the Democratic Party will try to make the argument that, see, this was just Trump's inflation, and we solved it. We inherited the mess and solved it is something they might try to say. So what does Donald Trump need to do going forward? Well, in my opinion, one of the first things he should do is moderate. I think this is a hard thing for him to do, but I see a lot of politics moving to the middle. People are worried about things that are common to everyone, crime, safety, education, schools, and the economy. It's the economy, stupid. After all, as the famous quote goes, we're seeing the left moderate, and really it's time for MAGA to moderate as well. I think while there are many claims and there are always going to be claims about elections and election security and fairness, and I always believe that checking or auditing elections is a good idea, I think it's very important that folks on the further end on the right spectrum and folks on the further end of the left spectrum move towards the middle if they want to actually continue to win elections. And I think that's what exactly the outcome of this last election was. Now, I want to hear from you after you consider that link down below on amazing perspective and wealth building programs through getting into real estate and going from zero to millionaire with real estate investing stock investing, or the brand new course that comes out Black Friday, which is on pre-sale now called the Elite Hustlers University, where I teach you how to make more money as an entrepreneur or an employee or someone with a side hustle. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.